Teppin's next expansion is on its way. Day of Nightmares comes out next month, and naturally most players are wondering about one thing. New card. What do you think? We've been getting artwork teases on the official Teppin Twitter since the expansion's announcement, but now we have the details on some of the cards in Day of Nightmares thanks to a preview on the official site. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Today, I want to talk about the reveals and how they could change the game's landscape next month. First, let's talk about a new mechanic, Spillover. A unit with this effect will deal half of its damage to units adjacent to the one it attacks. More on that in a minute. This is actually the second new mechanic that we know will be included. First is Explore, which we already discussed in the Jill video. Go watch that if you haven't already. First is Bushinryu Awakening. It's an epic 1 MP cost action that lets a friendly unit with Explore perform one. That card you get costs 1 MP less. Depending on the other Explore cards we get, this could see a lot of play. It's cheap and gives you card advantage. This is one to watch. Next is a new Leon Kennedy. This one is common. He's a 3 cost 2-3 that explores a fighting spirit card when he dies. That card is a 2 cost action that gives 1 unit plus 2 plus 2. I could see Wrath of those players potentially running this with the intention that he's played early, giving you another low cost buff for when you get your damage dealers on the board. Jill Explore decks could also find this useful. Ryu doesn't have a lot of use for him. Speaking of cards Rathalos can use, check this guy out. Zeragios is a 4 cost 1-6 with flight and combo. Rathawoken is already in good shape, but this will make the deck even stronger. In my opinion, this is the strongest card we've seen from Day of Nightmares so far. Willow is a rare 6 cost 2-7 unit that explores a spillover card when played. She also has a victory. Now this is a little confusing, but the spillover card is a little different from the actual effect. The card costs 1 MP and gives a friendly unit plus 1 plus 2 and spillover. I think green definitely needs damage dealing cards to help it stand on its own, not just in dual colored decks, and Willow could help, plus the spillover effect can really shift the tide of a match if timed properly. I really like this card. Alia is an epic 4 cost 2-1 unit with shield, and when she dies, she explores a Chimera Ride armor card that costs 2 MP less. That armor itself gives a unit plus two, plus two, and shield for one MP. Actions that give shield are already strong, so getting more benefits for the same cost is great. It's just slower because Alia has to die to get it. Overall, I think this card offers some good value. She just might be too slow to have an impact at the right time. I'm on the fence here. Kashala is our first new legendary. He's a 6 cost 2 6 with flight and a couple of other effects. First, he reduces damage taken of 3 or less to just 1 if he's on the field. Also, if he damages your opponent, he returns a random unit with 5 HP or less to your opponent's deck. That second ability can seem like a big detriment, but this seems like another green card that the color really needed, specifically for monocolor decks. This card would single-handedly shut down a Ryu player. I actually really dig this card. Vector is a four cost one five. When he's played, if there's another friendly purple unit on the board that costs four MP or less, he gets plus one, plus three, and he's unblockable. Conventional Morgans and Dante's probably won't play this card, but decks with a focus on resonating smaller units could find some use here. Overall, it's pretty situational. Tigrix is a 7 cost 4-7 with rush, agility, and spillover. That's a lot of power, but there is a downside. His resonate effect seals him. You know, despite that, this card is a game changer. It could certainly turn the tide of a match at the right time. I'd expect to see him often in September. We have a new Ada Wong. She's a 3 cost 2 5 that explores a stealth card when played. That's a 2 cost action that makes your unit unblockable, which could be devastating. So I'll mark this card as another one to watch. High Max is a 5 MP cost 2 5 unit with flight. He also has revenge for plus 2 plus 2. I get the feeling he could be a little too expensive for the average revenge deck, but flight means you'll more than likely close out games a little faster. I'd probably take out Cerberus for him in my Wesker deck. We have a new Albert Wesker card. He's a five cost zero three. And when he's played, he gets plus one plus one for each time revenge has been activated. 
I don't like this card at all. It's incredibly slow and will be a dead draw until the very end of the match. He could do well against Ryu and Nurg if you last that long, but purple decks and Wesker have plenty of tools to deal with them. I'm not impressed. And finally, we have Vile Mark II. He's a four cost, two five that explores a corrosion card when he dies that's a three cost action that destroys a unit that costs five mp or less in my opinion this is a great card removal is very strong right now plus his stats aren't bad for the cost Overall, I'm pretty happy with these additions. Most of them have potential to make an impact on the meta. A few of them are lackluster compared to other options, but I'm pretty excited for everything else to come with Day of Nightmares. Thanks for hanging around for this first impression. Subscribe if you want more Teppin content, and let me know in the comments which of these new cards really impressed you. Take care, see you next time.